Hello and welcome to the lecture series on power electronics. In the previous lectures we have seen that a buck converter can be used to suppress the available input voltage while a boost converter can be used to enhance the available input voltage. Today we would be seeing uh, a buck boost type of converter which incorporates the feature of buck converter and the boost converter to have an output which could vary from 0 to a very large value depending on the value of the duty ratio. So, we could have buck operation as well as boost operation in case of buck boost converter. So, this is an advantage associated with the buck boost converter, but there is a shortcoming also. The shortcoming is that uh, the output voltage that is available in case of a buck boost converter has got a polarity opposite to that of the input voltage. That means we would be getting an output voltage which is of reverse polarity compared to the input voltage and this is an undesirable feature of this particular converter. In our future lectures we do we will see uh, there are some converters which actually performs the operation of buck boost and at the same time retains the polarity of the input also. But right now we would be discussing about the buck boost converter and let us see and try to analyze it the operation of a buck boost converter. So, we will start with uh, the two modes we have mode 1 in which the switch this is a switch ok. So, let me just uh, briefly tell you this is a, a buck boost converter and you could see that uh, a diode and an inductor has been replaced in a buck boost circuit uh, and the position is basically an interchanged position compared to what we had in case of a buck converter. In buck converter we had a diode here and, a, in, and an inductor here, but in case of a buck boost converter we have just changed interchanged the positions. So, uh, how this uh, configuration or how this circuit has been evolved? So, uh, I would be discussing that in an, another lecture evolution of various uh, uh, DC to DC converter topologies and I will start with the very basic the buck converter and we will see how we can evolve the buck converter to make a boost or buck boost type of converter ok. So, right now we have we will be discussing here the buck boost type of converter and we have got since a single switch here and uh, this switch is uh, uh, just let me raise these things ok. So, this switch uh, is on the switch is on SW is on in mode 1. So, when it is on let us try to write down the various equations we will first write down V L. So, V L is the inductor voltage and that is equal to L d i l by d t i l is the current that is flowing through the inductor and this is equal to when switch is on. So, that means this is short circuit. So, let me reiterate it here that unless and until I uh, mention about the uh, various circuit parameters uh, about their non idealities or about uh, the uh, the real uh, 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 parameters we will assume that they are ideal in nature that means there is no resistance associated with the inductor and the switches both diode as well as the control switch sw this could be mosfet or an igbt or a bjt uh, normally we use uh, igbt which is a has, which has got superior characteristic and incorporates the good features of uh, mosfet and bjt uh, uh, in our analysis we will assume that those switches are also ideal in nature that means there is no power loss associated 
while in conduction or turning on or turning off of the switch. Okay. So, this is equal to when it is closed that means it is short circuit. So, V L this V L now current is flowing through V L uh, uh, is given by you could uh, we can apply K V L in this loop I can start from this point and I can move like this. So, minus of uh, V in and uh, plus of V L is equal to 0 that means V L is equal to V in. So, let me write it here or uh, let me write in capital letters since V in is a constant value. So, I have write I have written in capital letter V in. Now, what about I C? This is I C. Just note down the polarity that I have uh, kept of I C. So, uh, there is a there is a logic behind this polarity. Uh, although I am free to choose the other polarity, that means plus here and minus here. Uh, in initial analysis, we can always take and we can always assume any polarity across the uh, various uh, various devices or various elements of the circuit. And uh, in consequent uh, analysis, consequently uh, after the analysis, we will actually get the real polarity, and we have we'll have a knowledge about the polarity of the various uh, the elements, devices in the circuit. Okay, so I have just. Uh, made it plus here minus here and the logic is that the current since diode is in this direction. So, current would be flowing through the diode and through the inductor and would be charging the capacitor like this. So, plus here. So, there is not a big thing about it. Okay. So, I C I C would be equal to this I C as you could see here that I C here if I apply uh, K C L at this point and since diode is not conducting in that case only current is flowing here. So, I C is equal to minus of I naught minus of I naught. So, this is equal to I naught uh, is the current that is flowing through the load the load resistance R. So, this is equal to V naught by R. So, you must be wondering why I am you writing V naught by R and not minus V naught by R. You could see here the polarity that I have taken. I have kept plus here and minus here and uh, let me just uh, uh, show you that it would basically be V naught by R. So, uh, so let us start from this point which is V A and let me write down uh, the drop that will occur here and that is uh, since we are going in the direction of the current. So, it is minus of I naught into R and finally, we reach this point V B. So, this is equal to V B. So, V B minus V A is equal to minus I naught R and V B minus V A is nothing but V naught. So, V naught is basically minus of I naught into R. Okay. So, that means minus of I naught is V naught by R. So, that is why I have written V naught by R here. Okay. So, uh, let me just uh, erase this part, erase this part and uh, let me write down the equations in the next mode, mode 2. So, in mode 2, the switch S w is uh, off it is off. So, V L uh, now this is off then the diode turns on. Okay. So, this is off and now current is flowing uh, uh, like this in this loop. So, V L this V L will definitely again be L D I L by D T and that will be equal to you could see here that this voltage and this voltage will be equal now this is equal to V naught. Okay. What about I C? I C will be equal to you see if I apply K C L here then I C is basically equal to this uh, current coming into this junction which is I L minus I naught. So, this is I L minus V naught by 
or plus V naught by R. Fine. Now, let us uh, try to uh, draw the various waveforms associated with uh, a buck boost converter. Uh, let us start with the inductor current and inductor current uh, as we uh, I had drawn in case of buck and in case of boost also for continuous conduction case and for steady state it would be varying between two values I 1 and I 2. Okay. And the difference of the two will be the, volt, the current ripple in the inductor that is delta I L. Let me draw uh, V L now, V L is the voltage that will be appearing across the inductor. So, let me just uh, draw this line here and uh, this line also. Okay. So, from 0 to d t, this is the period when the switch is on, 0 is less than t is less than equal to d t uh, and in the off mode, it starts from d t and it is less than equal to t is less than not less than t and less than equal to t, capital T. Okay. So, from 0 to d t, you see the inductor voltage is V in. Okay. So, let me draw it here, it is V in. So, this is V in and in the off mode, when the switch is off, V L is equals to V naught. And I had told you that we will see consequently that V naught has got a polarity negative to that of V L. Okay. So, uh, actually I have shown it plus here and minus here, but uh, uh, when I will try to find it out in terms of V in, then we will see that V naught will be equal to minus of uh, some, some function which is a function of D times V in. So, that would basically be a negative value. So, some value, some negative value here minus V, uh, sorry V naught, this is V naught and this is negative. Okay. Now, let us try to plot I c. Let us try to plot I c. I c is V naught by R. So, it would be something here. This is V naught this by R and then finally, it becomes I l plus V naught by R. I l is this. You see, this is I l and I have to add V naught by R to it. So, something here, value would be something like this. This would be uh, I L, I L plus V naught by R. So, and uh, this point, at this point I L will be equal to I 2. So, this would be I 2 plus V naught by R and it will end at this point, this will be I 1 plus V naught by R. Come back here and again. So, this is your I c. What about V c? V c is the voltage that will be appearing across the uh, capacitor and if I apply K V L in this loop, in this loop you could see that uh, minus sorry plus of V c, this is your uh, V c. So, plus of V c I start from this point and go like this plus of V c and then again plus of V naught is equal to 0. That means, V c equals to minus of V naught and always from 0 to complete cycle t. So, V c is equal to minus of V naught, V naught is negative. So, it will come somewhere here and this is minus of V naught this point. Okay. So, this was V c. Let us see what is I d, the current flowing through the diode. So, in the first mode, no current is flowing. So, 0 and in the next mode, the current which is flowing through the uh, diode is same as the current flowing through the inductor. Okay. Okay. So, this is I L, I L is varying from I 2 to I 1. So, this is the I 2, this is I 1 and again it becomes equal to 0 after time t. 
what about VD, the voltage that will be appearing across diode. So, when the diode is conducting, no voltage will be appearing across it. So, I draw 0 voltage from the interval DT to uh, capital T, but there would be some voltage appearing across the diode when it is not conducting. So, in that case, when this is not conducting and uh, this is conducting, so what is the voltage that will be appearing here? So, this point minus this point. Okay, so, let me just uh, go through this loop. So, let us start from this point, say this is A and let me mark here it as V. So, V A and then I encounter the inductor, so minus of V L and then move through this and again I have got minus of V C is equal to uh, or I can take this V naught, I can move through this loop also. Okay, So, it is same no issue, I, I actually am interested in representing the diode voltage in terms of V naught. So, that is why I am taking this path. So, it is basically plus of V naught and this is equal to V B and you could see here that uh, this is plus and this is minus. So, V B minus V A would be V D. So, I bring this to this side. So, that means V B minus V A is equal to capital V naught minus V L and this is nothing but uh, V D, the diode voltage. What about V L? So, V L in uh, mode 2, because in mode 1 diode is not conducting, in mode 2 diode is conducting. Uh, so, yes, we have to see uh, what would be the value of V L when the diode is not conducting, that means in mode 1, it is equal to V in. So, I write here V in, V naught minus capital V in. Fine. So, V naught is negative minus V in is also negative. Okay. So, some negative value and a constant value. So, this is uh, actually V naught minus V in. Fine. What about, uh, let us now see the current through the switch. So, when the switch is not conducting in the second mode, so, current is 0 here and uh, when uh, this is dt, this is uh, t, but when it is conducting, when it is conducting the current through the uh, switch is equal to I L. So, it starts from I 1, it reaches I 2, I 1 to I 2. And what about the voltage appearing across the inductor? what would be the voltage appearing across the, in, no not inductor, the switch, sorry, the switch. So, this is the switch, when it is not conducting, then diode is conducting. So, in this case, I have to use this loop to find out the voltage across the switch. I can uh, just again mark two points here, A and uh, uh, B. Uh, just let me erase this part here and let me write down what would be the potential across. So, the polarity here would be like this of the switch. So, V A and I am going in this way, V A minus V in and then plus V L is equal to V B and the switch voltage V S W is nothing but V A minus V B and this is equal to V in minus V L and uh, the switch is off in second mode. So, V L is V naught. So, I write here V in minus capital V naught. V naught again is uh, is negative. So, V in minus V naught would result in a positive value. Okay. So, some positive value here. This. So, this is uh, V in minus V naught. This is the potential across the switch S w. Okay. Now, let us uh, try to find out an expression, up till now we have not find out, found out the expression uh, for uh, uh, correlating the input voltage and the output voltage. For that, we would be requiring these two equations, this equation and uh, this equation. Okay. So, let me uh, 
just uh, erase rest of the things. Okay. So uh, let me uh, write down this here. So V L is equal to V uh, naught, and this is in mode two. Okay. And this is in mode one. So again, here we will be uh, applying the the uh, the voltage second balance volt second balance okay to find out the inductor voltage okay so if i apply the volt second balance for the complete cycle the average value of the inductor vl for one complete cycle is basically 0 to t this is vl and this is dt and 1 upon t and this needs to be equal to 0 this is the uh, volt second balance for the inductor voltage. So, that means that means so from 0 to dt. So, 0 to dt the out V L voltage is V in. So, V in times d plus and from uh, uh, dt to t the voltage is V naught. So, V naught times 1 minus d and this is equal to 0. Uh, by t would be there, I will bring it on the right side, so that becomes equal to 0. So, that will give me V naught by V in equal to minus of d by 1 minus d, minus of d by 1 minus d. So, just see what this expression means. So, if I am varying, if I am varying d from 0 to 0 0.5, what will happen? So, from 0 to 0.5, some 0 to 0.5, uh, uh, what will happen? And what will happen if I vary d from 0 to sorry 0 0.5 to say 1. So, let us try to see how this uh, what uh, is the variation ok. So, let us try to see which of these two terms d and 1 minus t is greater in the two intervals ok. So, we have got uh, two terms 1 minus d and we do not know whether it is greater than or less than d. So, uh, let me just uh, keep a blank here let me br bring d on the left side. So, 1 minus 2 d and blank and here 0. So, you could see here just see here. So, if d varies from 0 to 0.5 so, this term will vary from 0 to 1 and definitely this would be less than 1. So, that means this is greater than this 0. So, that means 1 minus d is greater than d when d varies from this this range. Okay? So, if uh, 1 minus d is greater than d, 1 minus d is greater than d, then that means we have got buck operation the output voltage will be less than the input voltage for, for this range. And if, if I am increasing the value of d beyond 0 0.5, so if d is greater than 0 0.5 here, you could see that uh, 2 times 0 0.5 becomes 1 and any value of d greater than 0 0.5 would be greater than 1. So, 1 minus a value greater than 1 will result in a negative value. So, that means this becomes less than 0. So, consequently, 1 minus d becomes less than d for the range this range ok. So, that means this is the boost operation range and this range is the buck operation range. So, I hope uh, you have understood how uh, the buck boost converter works the uh, important waveforms associated with buck boost converter and finally, uh, 
the expression correlating input and output voltage and finally uh, what are the ranges of d for which the uh, the converter will behave as a buck converter and the converter will behave as a boost converter so thank you for watching